So the Halo Show Season 2 trailer just launched. You know we had to talk about it on the channel. Rather than do a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown, which can be a little boring, I just got five things you didn't pick up from that trailer and extra information that came out after the trailer. So if you guys like these informational videos, make sure you tap like for algorithm reasons. And if you're new to the channel, part of the 81% who are not subscribed, well, you know have to do that. So let's get right into those details. First, let's talk about the setting. Apparently, the events of Season 2 take place six months after the events of Season 1. I think this little time gap will help with the new writing team, which we'll get into later in this video, give them a fresh start opportunity to kind of just get into, tie up all the loose ends from Season 1 and get right into going into Season 2, because there's only going to be eight episodes. I just want to see how they write their way out of creating Zombie Master Chief, which ended in Season 1. Clearly, Chief is alive because he's very much featured in the trailer and and most of the time with his helmet off, so we could see some more concerning moments of that, but we'll just have to wait and see. Fact number two is that Jen Taylor is coming back to voice Cortana, which might not be an interesting fact, but what makes it interesting is the model that they use for Cortana within this trailer. Because this Cortana model is very different than the one we had last season. Definitely looks more human than last year's. Last year had like the weird like uncanny valley kind of look to it. It looked like a human, but had very unhuman-like characteristics. I don't know, it just looked weird. Since Cortana had to kind of like merge her way in with Master Chief at the end of season one, I don't know, it was confusing and weird. Uh, that I wonder if they want to go the same route that like Halo Infinite went, right? With like the weapon, which is still voiced by Jen Taylor, but a different character, but very similar to kind of touch on the same kind of vibes. I don't know, there could be some weird space magic. Like maybe if you integrate with the armor, so it disintegrates the AI model. I don't know. There's many ways they can write it around this. But touching on characters that are returning, pretty much every main character from season one is returning with season two. But we do have a couple of new characters coming in, one character being brand new to the franchise franchise, one of my characters for point number three here being Talia Perez. And she serves as a UNSC Marine Corps communication specialist. Honestly, not that special of a job, but she's heavily featured within this trailer. I would go as far as saying that we see Talia more than we see Master Chief. I wonder if Talia has some kind of connection. You see right here with like the Halo ring or something like that. I wonder if she has something special because she, she, she wakes up in the middle of like a study session kind of thing. So I'm curious what's going to happen with that. I feel like there's going to be something special about her that's going to make her much more of an important character. Now some of you deep lore fans out there for Halo might like this one as this character you saw within the trailer is James Ackerson. Ackerson is a character who has appeared throughout many of the early Halo novels including The Fall of Reach and Ghost of Onyx before he was killed in the comics and Uprising tied directly to Halo 3. The description of Ackerson reads as saying that he is a leader within the clandestine Office of Naval Intelligence Oni, who desires to advance his own initiatives to win the war against the Covenant by any means necessary. So this guy is just like pure Oni. I hope we see more of a moral dilemma when it comes to Oni. I felt like within season one, I was just like, oh my God, the Oni, the government or whatever are all bad people, so they can't be trusted. The thing about Oni is that they are much more complicated than just government bad kind of people. They are also willing to do what it takes to have humanity be at the forefront of what they need to have accomplished. So there is a bit of a moral gray area there where people can understand why they do terrible things because of what the possible benefits of it could be. Though I feel like they'll lean into this a little bit more with season two because they have a new showrunner and head writer, David Wiener. Looking at his IMDB page, you can see he's worked on many shows out there, pretty much popular stuff. The most popular one I see that comes up is The Walking Dead, which he does stay here. He wants to bring a much more grounded and grittier feel to the series, which I think is exactly what is needed for the Halo TV show. And working on a show like The Walking Dead, however you might question the writing or whatever, or whatever it definitely has that grittier tone. So he can helpfully grab that feel that I think was sorely missed within season one. And I'm sure many of you watching this have probably already left a comment saying there's no hope for this. Season one was awful. How could season two be any better? Well, Paramount has actually been known to take fan feedback and actually improve on what they've already created. Elite Falcon here on Twitter wanted to point this out, saying the show like Picard from Star Trek Picard, very much hated by the community for season one and two, especially season two. And then with season three, they're able to turn it around with an audience score with a thousand plus ratings of 90%. So I'm not trying to give you guys some hopium here. I'm just saying that there might be a chance of some quality content coming in here. And from what we saw of this season two trailer, I'm not gonna lie, 
it looked pretty awesome. We're going to see the fall of Reach happen within this show. Even though we did see Master Chief's face quite often within the trailer here, going with a more gritty tone, I don't think falls in line with the story arc that they had in season one of Master Chief learning that he's actually adopted. Well, forcefully adopted. And I have a feeling with the intro of season one, they'll probably cut right to the chase about that as we saw with Keys and Master Chief kind of looking right at each other kind of thing, right? So I'm assuming the whole story arc with Master Chief finding out the truth and Zombie Chief as well will probably be wrapped up in the first episode to kind of just get things set up, ready to go. And I have a feeling probably at the end of episode one, we'll probably see that Reach start to get attacked, leaving a little bit of a cliffhanger for episode two. But yeah, seeing what we saw within the trailer, it's like war. And then there's actually like consequences that look like they're happening. Some bad stuff is happening to humanity on the back foot. It's not a drama, it's an action show. And I hope that David Wiener is able to bring that to the show. If you got this far in the video, make sure you tap like, it really does help out the video. Leave me a comment if you're excited about season two. And if you're new to the channel or want to see some more content from me, check out this video right here. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.